Good morning and welcome to Sports Center on YouTube. Ryan Smith and Christina Alexander with you. So the Olympics are now over. College football starts in just 12 days, yeah. but every day is Judgment Day for the Yankees. Aaron Judge and the Bronx Bombers shining bright yesterday at home, hosting the Rangers. Going straight to bottom of the third Yankees, leading this one one to nothing. Juan Soto said, you know what I like at home? I like to get these home runs. And here's another one. Don't worry, I can do this on my own. It's solo homer for him. And at age 25, Soto is the youngest player ever to hit a home run against all 30 active MLB teams. That's his 29th home run of the season. He got that one. He got that celebration. The Judge Yankees lead two to nothing. On to the fifth. Same score. So Aaron Judge is intentionally walked. Or maybe they should have intentionally walked. Giancarlo Stanton rips one to left field for the three-run shot. That's his 20th home run of the season. Yankees up five to nothing. On to a seven. Up six three. Soto said, how about another one? Crushes one off of Andrew Chapin for the home run. His second of the game, his 30th home run of the season, New York up 7-3. Aaron Judge sends one deep to right center field for the solo shot. They go back to back. Judge's 42nd home run of the season. Yankees win 8-7. Here's Boone on Judge's unreal level. I try to remind myself every now and then, as I've told you guys a lot, sometimes I take them for granted, you know. <laughs> his greatness um, every now and then though I try to remind myself what I'm what I'm getting to watch over there every day with what he's been able to do and and just the player and the hitter that he's become it is remarkable yeah this is remarkable too because Aaron Judge is not leading baseball in every major offensive category he's second in batting average behind Bobby Witt Jr. but other than that it's all Judge look at this list best in baseball with 42 home runs tops in RBI extra base hits walks on base percentage slugging percentage OPS and more don't call it a comeback no I actually do call it a comeback Uncle L. <laughs> Because that's what happened. Braves thought they had this game one against the Rockies, but that's why they played the full nine. Top of the eighth, Braves up 7-2. Jorge Soler crushing that one. Second homer of the game, Braves up 8-2. Going into Sunday, teams have lost 1,409 straight games while trailing six-plus runs in the eighth inning or later. So bottom of the eighth, one on, Jake Kane. That's a homer. Rockies down 8-4. Are you sensing some foreshadowing here? You'd be right later in the <laughs> inning. Two runners on, two out. Charlie Blackman. That's in the center. Two runs coming in. Rockies now trail 8-6. A couple batters later. Rockies down 8-7. Brendan Rodgers up. Runners on the corners. Two out. Fly ball, and it gets right behind the D. Ezekiel Tobar's coming in. Ryan McMahon's coming in. Rockies. Take the lead after being down 8-2. They go on to win 9-8. So they really put a cherry on top of their night, right? They put a bow on it. It's called a fantastic finish, and we saw more of those. We're going to start in the diamond with the Padres visiting the Marlins. Jackson Merrill, so he leads off the ninth with the Padres down one. Merrill has really been clutch in situations in this series. Let's flash back to Friday. Leaning off the ninth, Merrill so. a fly ball deep to right center field for the game tying solo homer. Ties the game at two, and the Padres would go on to win 6 2 in extras. How about Saturday, top of the eighth inning? Merrill sends a fly ball deep to right field. Another game tying two run home run. Is this foreshadowing? I don't know. The Padres won that one 9 to 8. The answer is no. He hits a fly bomb to shallow left. That one's easily caught for the fly out. No miracle from Merrill this time, but two batters later. Asung Kim hits a fly ball deep to left field. That's the game tying home run. However, the umpire decides to review the home run. The ball appears to hit the padding on the wall, bounces towards the field before going out. So they would take back the home run and call it a ground rule double. So Kim, Back to second base you go. And the Padres fell 7 to 6 again. How would that affect them? Luis Camposano trying to be the hero, but he strikes out swinging. So the Padres can't recover from the game dying home run being taken away and lose 7 to 6. They're fighting for clicks, we're fighting for wins. One moment at a time. One more moment, and we go kick their ass by how we play. Let's go. Effort, toughness, fast. Those are non negotiables. Y'all just want to win. I want to dominate. The college football playoff begins.
begins in just 12 days. And these days, everything's bigger in college football. Like, literally, everything is expanding. The playoff from four teams to 12 conferences, the SEC adding heavyweights Oklahoma and Texas, the Big Ten and the Big 12, tacking on four more teams to their number, ever increasing their odds to win it all. Now, expanding upon, you like what I did there, the best bets for the coming season, here's Tyler Fulgham and Joe Fortenbaugh. It's your favorite connoisseurs of a football wager, Fortinbaugh and Fulgham, counting down the days because they are withering to nothing before the college football season starts. So let's give you a little betting preview, Joe, a couple of futures that you like. All right, we'll begin with the season win total, Texas Longhorns under 10.5 wins. Uh, coming off a monster season last year, Texas is back all that. Now they're a little bit overvalued. In fact, one of the more overvalued teams entering the 2024 campaign. Two losses, cashes this under for us, and I can tell you where we're going to find at least one of them. A back-to-back -back situation in mid-October where they're going to play Oklahoma and then immediately play Georgia the following week. They are not winning both those games. That's just mean, whoever set up that <laughs> scheduling situation. The Michigan road game in early September is problematic, as is, and this is the one to note, November 30th yep. against Texas A&M. If you want another one, let's go to the Big Ten. Like the Michigan Wolverines to miss the playoffs. Wow. It's minus 180, it's juicy, but I still love the bet. 15 starters are gone from last year's team, including a top 10 pick and quarterback in J.J. McCarthy. Hall of Fame head coach Jim Harbaugh, he's gone. You're going to be underdogs against Ohio State, Oregon, and Texas. The road trip to Washington is a problem as well. Honestly, there's no pressure on the Wolverines this year. After all those seasons, they finally cashed in, won a national championship. They're facing sanctions and everything else. No one's going to get upset if they struggle this year, and that's exactly what's going to happen. You, sir, understood the assignment. That catches my attention. Horns down and Michigan out of the <laughs> playoff. Meanwhile, Could have the found something positive, like an <laughs> over or a yes playoff, so alienating two small fan bases there. This will be positive for one program. Right. The Matinee, or premiere, I should say, on the matinee for the first round of games in college football. Georgia taking on Clemson. Now, they are co-title favorites, are the Bulldogs, as they start that season opener against Clemson with Ohio State. They're laying almost two touchdowns. Yeah. Would you do that with the Bulldogs? I would lay it. Georgia's going to be an absolute freight train this year, but they're bringing back a lot of studs from last year's squad. I actually made this about 14 and a half, so anything inside of the key number is a good play. Carson Beck returns at quarterback, completed 70% of his passes last year. If he's willing to take more shots down the field this season, this offense is going to be explosive. They've got one of the best and deepest, deepest excuse me, defensive lines in the country. Hard to trust Clemson. Dabo doesn't want to indulge in the transfer portal. They've got 10 losses over their last three seasons. Those two are correlated. Back to Sports Center with Fortin Bus' favorite college football plays. We'll learn a lot about both Texas and Michigan when they meet in Ann Arbor September 7th. Week 0 kicks off with Florida State and Georgia Tech in Ireland and then week 1 features four powerhouse matchups on ESPN and ABC starting with Georgia facing Clemson in Atlanta and ending with USC taking on LSU in Vegas. And today is the day We'll get the preseason rankings from the Associated Press poll. Looking forward to this season in college football. Not sure I know who's going to win it all, but I, look, I'm a Syracuse fan. Okay. I feel like I want to pick up a, a, a playoff contender. Yeah, you were leading. Texas you were leading towards Texas. Yeah. We'll see. And it'll be interesting to see Alabama without Nick Saban, yeah. Michigan without Jim Harbaugh. A season of changes getting started in just Wait. 12 days. Thanks for watching.